Romans 1, Part 2 Serving with the Spirit in the Gospel, Driven by Thirst for Fellowship Romans 1, 5-12 through 12, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are you also the called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Amen. Receiving grace and apostleship from the one with all authority. Romans 1, 5-12 through 12, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. In the last message, we saw that Christ is the ascended Son of Man who has been declared the Son of God with power. He is seated on the throne and all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. Amen. By that authority, he gives grace. That's why Paul says, by whom we have received grace and apostleship. Grace comes from the throne, from his authority. We receive grace from the seed of David, who was designated the Son of God with power according to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Grace has the backing of the enthroned heavenly Christ. For every believer, the grace that we enjoy is backed by the authority of the Son of God. It's a gift, and it's free. It's freely and abundantly available, and there's nothing to keep you from it. Because he who has the authority to give it to you purged your sins by himself and sat down at the right hand of God. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. Amen. When we believed, we received grace. Through grace came the free gift of righteousness and also the eternal life. That life has made us sons of God brothers of Christ and members of the body of Christ. Grace brought us the very life of Jesus Christ, the imperishable, the eternal life that was put on display in the humanity of Christ and which passed through death and swallowed it up, saturating Christ's humanity, transforming it and glorifying it in resurrection. Amen. As we've seen, that life that was in him and blossomed in resurrection to glorify his humanity. That same life is in us now. One day, we're going to blossom as well as the many sons of God. Amen. All of this is by grace. When we come to Romans 5, we'll see that grace makes us reign as kings in his life. We receive grace as believers to know the Lord and inherit this wonderful destiny with him. That is all by grace. By grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. Ephesians 2.8 What is the gift of God? Actually, the faith itself is a gift. Many believed on Jesus because of the miracles he did, but... He didn't entrust himself to any men because he knew what was in man. John 2, 25. Amen. The flesh is fickle and it's 
ability to believe is not what God is looking at. He is looking at the faith of the Son of God. I was crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. One of my favorite verses. Amen. Galatians 2.20 Peter says, We have all obtained like precious faith, which is more precious than gold that perishes, meaning it is incorruptible. 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1, and 1 Peter 1.7 It is something from God. Was there a human element in our believing? Yes, we could have hardened ourselves and not believed. We are accountable to believe, and yet when we believe, the real faith is furnished by God's gift as the Son of God believing from within us. Amen. He says that in Hebrews. I will put my trust in him in the midst of the congregation. Hebrews 2, 11 through 13. This is how grace comes to us to make us believers. Amen. Paul says that he received apostleship by this authority not only does grace give us the eternal life but it also gives us a function as members of the body the apostleship was special it was given in a sovereign way it wasn't something they chose to do remember jesus in his earthly ministry walking past matthew the tax collector sitting at his tables for example jesus said follow me Matthew 4, 19. Matthew dropped everything and goes and follows him. He did that with all of his disciples. He was literally able to just call them and there is something compelling so that they literally dropped everything to follow him for three and one half years. They dropped their whole life. This is something sovereign of God. He knew who he was going to choose he knew the choosing he knew that choosing them to be his witnesses and ambassadors would mean they'd give their life for him this is not something they really chose john 15 16 this is something they were prepared for their entire lives there was a compelling factor in this the calvinists call it irresistible grace but i do not believe the grace of god is irresistible i believe we can harden ourselves and resist but they were attracted to him and followed him they didn't know where they were following him they just dropped everything to go and see there is this mystery and unresolved tension between the fact that i'm accountable to believe and on the other hand gave god gave me the faith with the apostles there's even more of a sovereign working remember paul said he was separated from the womb to be an apostle you know the story how the ascended christ just struck paul down on the way to damascus in acts 9 he appeared to him and shut him down and basically ended his life that's what the apostles were they were witnesses, which can also be translated martyrs. Every single one of them gave and lost their life for Christ's sake, but considered Christ the treasure worth having and considered everything that they had prior to be dung, in contrast to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Amen. Philippians 3.8 Apostles are special. They are considered to be captives in christ's victory parade they are the spoils that christ took from the enemy and made gifts to the body of christ amen ephesians 4 7 and 2 corinthians 2 14. the apostleship was given so that christ could have ambassadors to preach the message of the gospel this was for the obedience of faith among the nations the obedience of faith is simply to believe. 
We believe the gospel, and that is our obedience. Amen. When Paul talks about obeying the gospel, our response of obedience is to believe it. The gospel is a message that we are to believe. It is a revelation of Christ in whom God is speaking, and this revelation was given to the apostles. The other apostles saw Jesus in the flesh during his earthly ministry, but Paul is an ambassador to reveal the gospel of a heavenly ascended Christ who is on the throne and in the church, which is his body. Amen. Verse 6, Among whom are you also the called of Jesus Christ? To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as he talks about receiving grace and apostleship from the ascended Christ as a matter of God's authority, we are called of Jesus Christ. Our calling to be members of the body of Christ to be the sons of God is backed by the same kind of authority. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you, for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Again, remember how incredible it was that Rome had a church. That means the gospel had reached the heart of the empire. It was a big deal in Paul's mind. This church was actually famous for their faith. You figure that eventually Peter was martyred in Rome, and that's where the Colosseum was. And the stories of the martyrs, they were famous in their witness for Christ and their suffering for him. Amen.